Second lesson, Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Brethren, what I am telling you now, I know that the majority of members of this fold do not observe these rites, but some observe. All those who cling to these practices are useless. There are very many yet who are outside of the fold of brother of the cross and star who understand what I am telling you now and they do not connect themselves with funeral rites. I am very happy to announce to you all that I have put a stop to funeral rites. It is said that if you do not serve God with what you have got, then you are bound to serve Satan. Those who observe funeral rites do not want to serve God with their substance, hence they serve Satan. What is the use of your going back for the yoke that weighed down your fathers? It is said that we are debtors not to live according to the dictates of the flesh. The children of God do not act according to the dictates of man, but according to the instruction of God. How beautiful and good would it be if whenever a person sleeps in the Lord, every activity is carried out the way brought out of the cross and stars directs. If you deviate from this recommended way, has the beauty not been lost? Do you remember that woman who brought unfold, untold hardship to King David? The woman put to birth a child for David. David became so sad when the child was sick. He wore sackcloth, mourns, and ate no food. This was so because of the love he had for the mother, and the same love was extended to the child. The behavior of the king made all his children pray that the sick child should not die, otherwise their father, King David, would also die. At last, when the child died, the news was hidden from King David because of fear of his sudden heartbreak that might lead to his death. At any rate, the king felt something extraordinary in the movement of the people in the house and suspected the death of the sick child. When this news was told to David, he woke up and demanded for water for his bath with food. The action surprised the entire household. David could not help telling them that he was sad that he served himself, that he starved himself of food, wore sackcloth, mourned, and rolled on the dust, asking God for the life of the child. But the moment the child slept in the Lord, that there was no need for him to continue in that state of life. Think of it very seriously. When somebody is sick, when somebody is sick, everything is done to bring the person to recovery. But as soon as the person sleeps in the Lord, there is no need for your weeping, for your wearing of sackcloth or keeping mourning out. The whites, for instance, do not behave the same way as the blacks do when a person sleeps in the Lord. The origin of grave emanated from the idea of the corpse to be kept in waiting for the deceased to resuscitate. Today, you construct the grave with blocks and cement. Furthermore, 
it has become a pride announcing to others that you want to erect a tombstone in memory of your deceased father or mother or brother. Brethren, this is the time that we must come to the wisdom of truth because the time of that foolishness has passed. God is God of the living and not God of the dead. It is forbidden to touch the dead. Brethren, as, as a brotherhood, when somebody is sick, provide all the services you can to that person. But as soon as the person sleeps in the Lord, you should not be connected with the person anymore. As it is stated in Numbers chapter 6 verse 6, it says, all the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. Brethren, therefore, whatever you are doing after the person had slept in the Lord is foolishness. The corpse that God has rejected is what you, as a child of God, shoulders its responsibility by performing funeral rites are you a child of God or a child of perdition? A good child loves what loves a good child loves what the father loves and hates what the father hates. Brethren, you continue to resist the Holy Spirit by observing these rites. That is why you are poor and are confronted with all sorts of tribulation of this world. Now, the only news that you delight in is about death. Have you any reference to make in the Bible to support the observances of funeral rites? This is why I ask you to examine the Bible and see whether you can boldly say that you have got eternal life. You should note that the worldly people have known what I am telling you now. But the trouble is, who will bear the cat? In other words, who will start it? Do good to a person while he lives. Brethren, a great number of people in this town realize that once they die, the traditional plays will be staged on their behalf. Some, on the other hand, state emphatically that on no account should a traditional play be staged at their funeral. Whatever is conducted at the funeral is exactly what the deceased had instructed and as such the children of the deceased have no case to answer should they fulfill the deceased demand. Funeral rites are performed not for any benefit but because they serve as a means of contribution among the participants. It is your utmost duty to do all you can to anybody while he or she lives and to allow him or her to sleep in the Lord when it is time and after that offer him or her no further services. So it is with consulting a juju priest, a soothsayer, a necromancer, a native doctor. Those who serve these illusions know quite well that there is no power in these things but they serve them because of the lust of the flesh, because their forefathers served them for this name's sake and their belly. Do not do anything to please man. Always do things to please God because we are the children of God. Do not look for the praise of man. For God sees all things. He will praise you. Do not seek gifts from man because it is God alone who gives. 
do not seek to be loved by man, for God alone loves, because he is love. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Brethren, right now, people are saying that this is the season of a poor masquerade, that no woman should do anything. Yet, if you look around, you will see mushroom churches dotting all about such a place. These people deceive themselves. In other places, people will say, today is the day for women to celebrate and no man should interfere. At times, they set aside a season or period for a certain juju or mermaid to be celebrated, thus restricting people from the area. All these things are fake and depict the work of darkness. These are the things that impoverish all classes of people in many countries, in many nations and societies. Those who are initiated into secret societies would be told not to go to certain areas in the town or city or village unless they have developed as unless they are developed to a certain stage. Some believe in certain omens and alleged that no woman touches them or should they go near them. Others restrict women who are in their menstrual period not to go near to them. This, I tell you, depicts the work of darkness. And if you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, as he who died and shed his blood for the atonement of your sin, why do you observe all these things? A child of God need not observe anything of this kind. You will observe that it is here in the fold of brotherhood of the cross and star that women are free to worship God under all circumstances because there is no law in the fold. The new covenant that is observed is love one another. Some women sue others before a group known as the Iban Isom. for a fine because of a particular offense either by action or by word some people stress that it is an obligation that a girl undergoes fattening with certain observances before she marries should you wish to erect a building, you will have to give goats or gin or assorted drinks and poor libation before the ground is dug for the foundation. I am telling you that no sooner you yield to this advice then you plunge into trouble. None note that the whole desire of the society members are the gluttony of man. If they say that it is obtained, it, if they say that it is ordained of God that such things should be observed, let them support it with a Bible quotation. Do not heed to traditions of man, rather heed to the fear of God. Brethren, in your family you are told that you are doing yourself harm by not doing certain things. 
and by not eating certain food. But I am telling you that you are not doing yourself any harm by refraining from the forbidden things and the forbidden food. Know that somebody instituted what was forbidden and not God. It is said that it is sinful for two sisters of the same parents to marry the same husband. But I tell you that is not true. Five, three, or two sisters of the same parent can marry the same man. Do you not remember the case of Jacob, how he married two sisters of the same parents? He served the father-in-law for a period of seven years in order to have the hand of the second daughter in marriage. But when he realized that he was tricked by the father-in-law who had given him the first daughter for a wife, he worked for another seven years and had the hand of the second daughter in marriage. Was there any problem as he married the two sisters? The two sisters are those who formed the twelve tribes of Israel. You allege that no man can marry his own blood sister. And if it is so, it happens. And if it so happens, it is incest. But know that this law is only instituted by man. Cain and Abel, for instance, were twin brothers. If they did not marry their own sisters, how could they have multiplied? Remember that there were no other human beings existing by then. The time is ripe to eradicate all the man-made laws. There is no law existing by itself except a person enacts one for himself. Love reigns supreme now. Love covers sin, brethren. Everything hangs on love. True love covers multitude of sin. Lack of love brings about all the tribulations and anguish in life. Do not respect or keep the instruction of man, but keep the instruction of God. What caused Abednego and his two friends, and even Daniel, to suffer was because they did not recognize man-made institution or man-made instruction. The same thing happened when the Jews forbade Peter and John not to preach in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter asked them to consider for themselves whether it was expedient to hear the voice of man more than the voice of God. What makes people refuse coming into the fold of brotherhood of the cross and star is that they are afraid of forsaking man-made instruction. Since the world performs funeral rites in order to feed or fat from the wealth of the deceased relatives, they vow that they would never become baptized members of brotherhood of the cross and star. Of a truth, brother of the cross and star has come to destroy customs and traditions. People are often deceived that if they do not celebrate the memorial service of their great grandfathers, that they would bear no child. Believe me, that while saying this, as a statement of fact, the wife of one who does not perform any of these rites conceives and put to bed a bouncing child. While another person was inducing the other person to pay up his wife's bride price or else the woman will bear no living child, another man who had paid no bride price in respect of the wife announces the safe delivery 
of a living child by his wife, the entire world becomes dismayed so much that the people shout, Oh, Abu has confused the entire world. No brotherhood could be deceived, but should you fall a victim, you are a fool at 40. At times, they trick you by telling you that if you do not consult a soothsayer or a necromancer or a native doctor, things will not be well with you, but instead you prosper better than the man of the world. Some people are misled with the misquoted statement that God helps those who help themselves. Can you make reference in the Bible where it is thus stated? Yet, you forget to tell people that it is written in the Bible that God curses the native doctors. He curses the necromancers and the soothsayers along with those who keep mourning houses. Those things that God forbid you to do are what you delight in. Brethren, do not go back to bear the yoke that were born by your great grandfather and, and mother and were worn down because these things brought untold hardship. It brought suffering and difficulty to man. In the fold of brotherhood of the cross and star, we eat bananas, we eat oranges, pineapples, we eat ground nuts and other fruits because these are the fruits given to man by God himself. As you now go back to the world, the people will demand so many things that you have forsaken like assorted brands of drink, like snuff and sacrifice. And as you give them these things, it means that you have associated with them again. We are ripe to be independent of ourselves because one with God is a majority. Do not weep when anybody sleeps in the Lord because you do not even know yourself except God alone because he does everything and he owns everything. Our Lord Jesus Christ told the woman, the women of Jerusalem to weep for themselves and their children. If we practice the words of God, we will have no problem at all. But as for the world, the people are beset with diverse problems, tribulations, and difficulties. Brethren, I do not want to take you any further. A stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.